If you have never used a gimbal before but interested in buying your first gimbal, then the gimbal I'm reviewing today is probably the best gimbal for beginners. Kia good morning everyone, Richard Wong here. Welcome back to the channel. It looks like recently we have been reviewing a lot of video gear. Uh, just not too long ago, we reviewed another gimbal and then reviewed the Panasonic S1H, which is a really video-centric professional camera. And today we are looking at another gimbal. And the one that we're looking at today is the Zhiyun Crank M2. And after using this gimbal for about two weeks, I believe this is probably the best gimbal for beginner in the market right now. Now, I don't really mean that this gimbal is only suitable for beginners because it is definitely not the case. You may be a bit confused by what I just said, but don't worry, I'm going to explain to you and I'm going to tell you why I think this is the best gimbal for a beginner as well. But before that, let's go through all the features, the design and the operation of this gimbal first. Oh, before I start the review, just a very quick disclaimer, Zhiyun sent me this gimbal for the review, but they allow me to say pretty much everything I want as long as it's true and it's fair. And that is exactly what I always want to do in my review. I always want to share with you my unbiased, fair comment about each of the products that I have used and I'm reviewing. So I will do exactly the same thing in this video as well. First thing, when I received the gimbal, I was really surprised by how small the box is. Look at this is the size of the box that the gimbal comes with. It is very small. It, this is pretty much the same size of the box of the last smartphone gimbal I bought. So I was really surprised to see such a small box because the gimbal can take up to a small mirrorless camera. So this is not a smartphone gimbal. And when I took the gimbal out of the box, the gimbal is definitely very small as well. Let me put this box aside. Uh, look at the size of this gimbal. I already attached the tripod here and put a camera on. When I remove both of them, when I take it out of the box, it is definitely very, very small. But while the size is small and it also feels quite light, the build quality of this gimbal is absolutely fantastic. The body of the gimbal is made of metal. So when you hold it in your hand, it definitely feels very solid and very well made as well. Now at the bottom of the gimbal, now I have the tripod attached to it. So this little tripod comes with the gimbal. This is a very handy accessory because you can not only use it as a tripod, um, you can also use it as a extension to the gimbal. So if you want to hold it in some strange angle, weird angle, very high, very low, then you can hold it uh, from the extension bit or you can hold it both hands to give you more steady control. But unlike the tripod that comes with some of the bigger gimbal that is made of metal, this one is made of some kind of composite material. In other words, some kind of um, very high quality plastic, but it's not made of metal. The design of the gimbal is very similar to most of the gimbal in the market. There's an LCD screen at the top which tells you what mode you are in and also some of the current status of the gimbal. And then you have the joystick here which allows you to change the orientation of the gimbal. And you have the record button here which when you um, connect the gimbal to your smartphone or one of the compatible camera then you can trigger the start or stop of the recording using this button and then you have the mode button here so you can toggle between different mode when you start you'll be in the pf mode which is the pan follow which means when you are panning the gimbal the camera will follow the direction that you are pointing to but if you tilt the gimbal up or down or sideways then it will try to maintain as steady as possible without changing the direction of the gimbal. And if you press the mode button one, now it will be in the lock mode. So no matter what direction you try to turn, you want to turn it left, turn it right, up, down, or sideways, the gimbal will always try to maintain the same orientation of the camera so it doesn't move at all. And then if you press the button again, then you will now be in the POV mode, that is the point of view mode. So that means the gimbal will follow any kind of movement uh, when you tilt the camera, when you pan the camera, when you turn it sideways, even when you rotate it 360 degree, the gimbal will try to follow your movement, but it will try to smooth and also give you a very smooth output video footage. When you press the button twice, then it will turn into go mode. What I mean is that the gimbal will follow your pan and tilt movement, 
but it will follow it in a much faster speed so this is good when you are trying to shoot some very fast action or when you want to follow your target very closely go mode is the mode that you should use and double press again and it will turn into the vortex mode this is probably the most exciting and fun mode out of all the mode that the gimbal can do what it does is that the camera now pointing uh, directly upward and when you press the joystick here then it will start turning around and that can give you some really cool footage uh, for example you look at the building you can see the building spinning but you don't always have to just point it upwards you can point it forward as well you can also create some pretty cool effect when you are pointing camera like this and then spin the camera around when you are shooting in the lock mode and you try to turn the gimbal around like this the gimbal will still try to maintain the um, the orientation where the camera pointing to so, but if you want to quickly adjust the direction that you are pointing to what you can do is that you just hold this trigger button and now you can turn it and then the camera will follow the direction that you are pointing to and once you have finished adjust your direction you can then let go of the trigger button and now it will change back to the lock mode so you will not change the direction of the gimbal again double click the trigger at the front we will reset the camera into the neutral position triple tap the trigger and then you turn the gimbal into selfie mode my original plan was to do a demonstration on how to set up and balance the gimbal because this is the thing that most beginners will be struggling with how do i set up the gimbal is it very hard to do that is it very hard to balance it to tell you the truth you will need to spend a little bit of time to learn how to set up the gimbal how to balance the gimbal but it is actually not very hard you just need to follow the step-by-step -step instruction and you have made some excellent tutorial and tell you how to set up the gimbal so i'm not going to repeat it in this video but I do want to share with you some of the tips that I have learned from my previous experience, especially when I knew completely nothing about a gimbal. So there are a couple of things that you have to remember. The first thing is when you are setting up the gimbal, you do need to uh, loosen all the knobs when you are trying to balance the gimbal because if it's in the tight position, then you cannot move the arm at all. It may sound silly, but I remember the first time when I tried to set up the gimbal, I was really thinking, how do I move it? It doesn't really move at all. And that's because I forgot to loosen the knobs on the gimbal. And the second thing is remember to remove the camera strap and also the lens cap before you try to balance the gimbal. You may have balanced the gimbal perfectly when you have the lens cap on it, but once you move the lens cap, then all the balance will go out of balance and you have to rebalance it again. So definitely remember to remove all the accessory that you won't be using during the recording. And if you want, you can put it back after you balance it but you do have to remove all those things again when you are recording. And the third thing is quite similar to the last one. If your camera has a flip out screen, uh, tiltable screen, especially the one that you can flip out, remember to put it in the position that you want to use when you are shooting video, when you try to balance it. Otherwise, you may have a perfectly balanced gimbal, but once you put the screen out, then the gimbal will not be balanced anymore. And the four things is remember to install the battery and the memory card before you balance the gimbal. Same thing if you balance the gimbal without the battery or the memory card, then once you put in the battery or the memory card, then the camera, the gimbal will out of balance again. So if you follow these tips and then follow the instruction video on Zhiyun's YouTube channel, then you will only take you maybe the first time, maybe 10, 15 minutes to set up and balance the gimbal. But if you try it a few more times, it will get faster and faster. With a smaller gimbal like this Crane M2, to balance it is definitely a little bit harder than the bigger one because some of those adjustments is very tiny. You move it slightly tiny bit to the left and then the camera will be completely out of balance. So sometimes it may be a little bit tricky, especially when you first learning how to set it up so what i would really want to see instead of using a knob is that if they can make it a dial or something so that you can instead of loosen it up and then you have to use a hand to adjust it to precisely you can use a dial to like dial it do some fine adjustment i think that would be a lot easier for people to set up especially for beginners who are not very experienced in balancing a gimbal 
But to be fair, this is not a unique problem for this gimbal. Pretty much all the gimbal I have used, uh, especially the smaller size like this, would use this kind of locking and locking mechanism. But I would definitely love to see when one of the gimbal have an easier way to fine tune and adjust the balance of the gimbal. The gimbal has a built-in non-replaceable battery. For some people, this is definitely a downside because you may want to carry a couple of extra battery. But I find the battery life actually it seems to be pretty good. It would easily last me almost a full day even I was shooting a lot of video with the gimbal. And because Zhiyun tried to make this gimbal as compact as possible, this is a very small gimbal. So the downside is that some of the adjustment, some of the arm adjustment, you only have a very limited amount of travel. If your camera is a relatively small and also the weight distribution is relatively standard, then you probably wouldn't have a problem. But if your camera is quite large or the weight distribution is not quite usual, then you may have a bit of trouble trying to perfect balance the gimbal because there's only a very limited amount of travel that you can adjust on each of the axes. The Zhiyun Cram M2 can carry payload from as little as 130 gram to around 720 gram. That means it can carry small action camera like my GoPro section here all the way up to a small mirrors camera for example the Panasonic GX series camera or the Sony A6000 series camera with a small lens on it that would work and of course everything in between including small compact camera I have even tried it with my Leica Q which is a full frame compact camera it's not really compact it's a pretty big camera the gimbal can still handle it but I think it is pretty much the limit of what this gimbal can handle and also if you want to use it with a smartphone it also comes with a smartphone holder in here so you can just put your smartphone onto the holder and then you can lock it onto the gimbal that makes this Cran M2 a very versatile gimbal so after using this gimbal for about two weeks I am pretty impressed by this little gimbal the performance of it is very good if you're running with a large smartphone or heavy camera attached to it then the Crane M2 may struggle a little bit, but otherwise the gimbal does a pretty good job stabilizing the output footage. The only complaint or limitation I had is that because some of the arms they don't have 360 degree travels, so you just really have to pay attention if you are going to shoot in some extreme angle or extreme movement with this gimbal. Now let's go back to the topic, why I think this gimbal is the best gimbal for beginners. And there are five reasons for that. First one, this is not exactly a beginner's gimbal. So now you may be confused why I say that. Because, okay, a lot of people, when they are buying the first gimbal, they were looking for the real beginner gimbal. A lot of time is the smartphone gimbal because they are very easy to use, very easy to set up. Um, use the holder, snap your smartphone on it, and then you can turn on, and then you can start shooting. But the problem is because of the price and also the size of those gimbal, it's missing a lot of feature that is available on the larger gimbal. For example, it wouldn't have an LCD screen, which is very useful when you want to check the status of the gimbal and also want to change some of the settings of the gimbal. It normally wouldn't have a tripod mount at the bottom and wouldn't come with a tripod legs, which is very handy. And then you also wouldn't have things like um, there's a mounting hole here so that you can attach some external accessory, for example, a LED light or a microphone. So if you buy one of those smartphone gimbal, it's true, you can set it up and learn how to use very quickly. But soon after that, when you want to take your skills or your video quality to the next step, then you find you are really limited by what you can do with those gimbals. And point number two, this gimbal is not too big. This is like the exact opposite of the first pond. Some people, when they're looking at buying their first gimbal, they saw, oh, that Crane 2 looks fantastic. And I can use it with a full frame camera and I can take some amazing footage. So I go and buy this gimbal because it's used by a lot of professional videographers. Now, a problem is even though those big gimbal are fantastic, they offer you a lot of features, a lot of adjustment. You can do whatever you want with those big gimbal. But the problem is they are 
big and heavy. If you have never hold one of those big gimbal before, I would highly recommend you go to a shop and try to hold one with your hand. And remember, before you do that, put a camera that you are planning to use onto the gimbal and then hold it up and I can guarantee you if you have never hold a full size gimbal before with a for example a full frame camera put it on top of it hold it up 10 seconds 20 seconds later your arm will start shaking now I don't really have a big arm but I'm a wedding photographer so I'm pretty used to holding big and heavy camera setup whole day but even me, when I hold a full-size gimbal with a full-frame camera set up on top of it, my arm will struggle to hold it for more than 30 seconds. Then I, my arm will start dropping down, dropping down because my arm just cannot handle a setup like this, um, especially with one hand only. With two hand, maybe a little bit longer, but it is definitely not something that everyone can handle. So a lot of people would go and buy a big gimbal like that, and then they would just never use it because it's just too heavy. And the third reason why I think this Crane M2 is an excellent gimbal for beginners because it can handle a wide range of cameras. If you are a beginner, one of the biggest questions you may have is that, okay, what sort of gimbal should I buy? Should I buy a smartphone gimbal? Should I buy a gimbal for a small camera? Which one should I buy? For me personally, when I bought my first gimbal, I bought a smartphone gimbal. I quite enjoyed it for about two weeks time. After about two weeks of usage, I starting to feel like, actually, I want to keep my smartphone off the gimbal. I want to use some other camera on the gimbal instead. Now the problem is the smartphone gimbal I bought can only be used with a smartphone. So I went and bought a gimbal specially designed for the action camera and I was pretty happy about it for about two months. After that, I feel like, no, I want to use some bigger camera because I want to improve the image quality. And that means I need to go and buy my third gimbal. So you see the problem that I have and I'm pretty sure that is not a unique problem for me. A lot of my friends or my subscribers that I have talked to told me they have exactly the same problem. So with this Cram M2 because it can support a pretty wide range of payload. So you can use it with a wide range of camera. You can use a small action camera. Um, you can use a smartphone and it even comes with the smartphone holder. You can use a compact camera. This is not really compact, but you can use it with a smaller compact camera. I have used the Cran M2 with the Leica Q, even though the Leica Q is definitely not a normal compact camera. And the Cran M2 can still handle the Leica Q okay. And also you can use it with a small mirrorless camera. So if you buy the Cran M2, you just give yourself a lot more flexibility. You can try it out and use it with different kind of camera and just find out which type of camera is the one that you want to use it with. And then the fourth reason why I think the Cran M2 is great for beginners because a lot of beginners, they bought a gimbal and then they end up not using it because it just take too long to set up the gimbal every time before you want to shoot. So end up they just leave the gimbal in their bag and without taking it out. But with this Crank M2, to set it up and pack it up is actually very easy and now I'm going to show you how to do that. So first thing you need to do is just to remove the camera from the gimbal. There's a knob here at the bottom and you just need to um, turn it around so that you press this button here and then you can slide the camera out from the gimbal so you have the camera here and then the next thing that you have to do is just to unlock this knob here the red one and then you can pull it up a little bit and you just need to align it like this and push it down and then there's a pin from the bottom here that push right through it and that completely lock all the axis of this gimbal apart from the one at the bottom. The one at the bottom, you just need to turn this switch here and then you turn it around and they will lock it. And now you have the gimbal completely locked it so you can just put it into your bag. And now if you want to put the camera back onto the gimbal and start shooting again, it's very easy. The first thing you need to do is to uh, unlock this tab here and then you can just put the gimbal back to 
the unlocked position. And one thing that I actually forgot to mention before is that there's a tab here, which you would use to um, limit how far the arm can go when you have the gimbal perfectly set up balance. So what you need to do now is that you can just push the arm all the way until it hit that tab here and then you can lock it here. And that means the arm position here is exactly what it was before when you have the gimbal balance. And then you just need to slide the camera with the quick release pay attached back onto the gimbal like this. And then lock it. And then also uh, unlock this switch here. And now you have the gimbal pretty much balanced just like how it was before. So that is very quick. That only takes you 15, 20 seconds at most. You don't have to reset up and rebalance the camera again. So that would just make you want to use the gimbal a lot more compared to the case when you have to spend another two, three minutes to rebalance the gimbal again. And that is another reason why I think this is the best gimbal for beginners. And for the fifth reason, I actually don't have the fifth reason. It's just a lot of YouTube videos say five reasons, there's five reasons there. So I thought maybe I should say five reasons. But at the same time, I really don't want to just randomly make up another reason just to make up the number. But anyway, I think those are four very good reasons why the Crane M2 is the best gimbal for beginners. But having said that, it doesn't mean this gimbal is for beginners only. If you are a more advanced gimbal user, I'm sure you will also appreciate some of the features that is available on this very compact gimbal as well. So thank you very much for watching this video. Do you agree with me that this Crane M2 is the best gimbal for beginners or you think there's another gimbal that is actually more suitable for beginners let me know in the comment below what you think and i will see you in my next video